Have you ever felt the overwhelming urge to share every blessing and miracle that God has bestowed upon you? In today's world, it's so easy to broadcast our achievements and joys for everyone to see. But what if God wants us to keep some of those blessings close to our hearts, nurturing them in silence? In this video, we will uncover the profound wisdom found in Scripture about why sometimes keeping our mouths shut about God's blessings can bring greater spiritual growth and protection. Stay with us until the end to discover how this powerful truth can transform your relationship with God and enrich your spiritual journey in ways you never imagined. But before diving into part one, we invite you to take a small challenge. Patiently watch until the end of the video without missing any lesson, because each topic shared is an important key. Learn opens wisdom and peace in your soul, leading you to live as a child of God. Number one. To my cherished brothers and sisters in Christ, let us delve into the profound wisdom encapsulated within the sacred pages of God's Word. When the Almighty bestows His blessings upon us, it stirs within us an innate desire to share our jubilation with the world. However, in the midst of this exuberance, it is paramount for us to discern the occasions when divine wisdom beckons us to remain reticent about the wondrous deeds wrought in our lives. Foremost among the reasons for such discretion is the imperative to nurture humility and evade the pernicious snare of pride. Pride, an insidious sin, possesses the capacity to insinuate itself into the recesses of our hearts surreptitiously. In moments of abundant blessing, whether manifested through financial affluence, fruitful ministry endeavors, or miraculous healings, the allure to extol these blessings or bask in personal acclaim becomes all too palpable. There exists a palpable inclination to regale acquaintances with our testimonies, harboring aspirations of impressing them or garnering their admiration. Yet the scriptures offer us a sobering admonition in James 4. 6. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Our Heavenly Father yearns for us to maintain an attitude of humility, acknowledging that every good bestowed upon us emanates solely from His benevolent hand. By silently offering gratitude to God within the recesses of our hearts and refraining from vocalizing His blessings, we actively rebuff the snares of pride. We affirm that the spotlight is not on us, but rather on His magnificence and boundless affection towards us. Consider the paradigm set forth by Jesus during His earthly ministry. On numerous occasions, subsequent to performing astounding miracles and healings, He instructed the beneficiaries to refrain from disclosing the events. In Mark 1.44, following the cleansing of a leper, Jesus solemnly cautioned the individual, saying, See that you don't tell this to anyone. Jesus apprehended the significance of humility and sought to avert any semblance of personal adulation that might obfuscate his paramount mission of redemption. By emulating the example set forth by Jesus and exercising restraint regarding the blessings conferred upon us by God, we cultivate a spirit of humility that resonates with our Heavenly Father. We learn to derive contentment and joy from the simple knowledge that we are cherished and favored by the Almighty, rather than seeking validation from our peers. This imperative does not imply a perpetual silence concerning our testimonies. Rather, it underscores the necessity of sharing them with pure intentions, perpetually directing others' focus towards Christ, not ourselves. Furthermore, by refraining from vocalizing God's blessings, we afford Him the latitude to operate in manners unforeseen. At times, the Lord may opt to employ our silent fidelity and gratitude as a testament to others unbeknownst to us. Our modest and tranquil spirits possess the capacity to resonate profoundly with those in our midst, drawing them inexorably towards the wellspring of our joy, Jesus Christ Himself. Hence, beloved brethren, let us internalize this invaluable precept delineated within the sacred scriptures. When the Almighty lavishes His blessings upon us, let us resist the impulse to broadcast them ostentatiously. Instead, may we incline our heads in humble thanksgiving, 
offering our gratitude privately for His abundant goodness and mercy. Let our lives serve as a living testament to His grace as we traverse the path of obedience and humility before Him. May we never lose sight of the reality that it is not about us, but about the One who bestows upon us every good and perfect gift. As we maintain silence with our lips and openness within our hearts to His guidance, may we encounter the genuine joy and tranquility that emanate from lives surrendered entirely to Christ. Number two, in the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus imparts a profound lesson, urging us to exercise caution in displaying our acts of righteousness before others merely for their recognition. He warns that if we succumb to the temptation of seeking human applause, our reward from our Heavenly Father will be forfeited. When God bestows His blessings upon us, the impulse to proclaim His favor to the world often becomes irresistible. We're tempted to broadcast our blessings on social media platforms, boast to our social circles, or subtly weave mentions of our blessings into conversations, all in an effort to draw attention to ourselves. However, herein lies the crux. God beckons us to accumulate treasures in heaven rather than striving for earthly acclaim. Upon receiving a blessing from the Almighty, whether it manifests as a financial windfall, a miraculous healing, a restored relationship, or any other form of victory, the most profound gesture we can offer is to keep it sacredly guarded between ourselves and God. It's akin to receiving a clandestine love letter from our Heavenly Father, a moment of intimate communion shared exclusively between the two of us. By exercising discretion and refraining from publicizing our blessings, we demonstrate that God's approval holds infinitely greater significance to us than the fleeting applause of humanity ever could. Consider this analogy. When you pray, do you stand ostentatiously on street corners, seeking to garner attention? Certainly not. Instead, you retreat to a secluded sanctuary, shutting the door behind you, and pour out your heart to God in the privacy of that sacred space. Your motivation isn't the pursuit of recognition or social validation. Rather, it stems from a profound love for God and a fervent desire to nurture your relationship with Him above all else. Similarly, when God bestows His blessings upon us, our focus shouldn't be on impressing others or fostering the illusion of spiritual superiority. Instead, it should center on cherishing the gift bestowed upon us and leveraging it to deepen our intimacy with Him. When we safeguard our blessings within the sanctum of our hearts, we create a hallowed chamber wherein we can commune intimately with God, unhindered by distractions or ulterior motives. However, this doesn't imply a blanket prohibition on sharing our testimonies or extolling God's glory publicly. There is a rightful time and venue for such expressions. The crux lies in doing so with a pure heart, eschewing self-aggrandizement and directing the focus towards the goodness and faithfulness of our Creator. By maintaining discretion regarding our blessings, we afford God the latitude to orchestrate even grander manifestations of His grace, both within our lives and within the lives of those around us. Therefore, when you find yourself the recipient of God's benevolence, resist the urge to trumpet it on social media or boast to your peers. Instead, seize the moment to offer heartfelt gratitude in the sacred recesses of your heart relishing the intimacy of that communion shared solely between you and your Heavenly Father. Let your gratitude be the incense that ascends as a fragrant offering to the heavens, confident that as you amass treasures in heaven, your Heavenly Father will reward you openly in manners that transcend the transient accolades of this world. Remember, he who observes your actions in secret will openly bestow his blessings upon you. Fix your gaze steadfastly upon eternity and let the narrative of your life resonate as a resounding testament to the boundless goodness and grace of our God. In doing so, you'll discover that the blessings bestowed upon you by God are infinitely sweeter than any ephemeral praise that emanates from the lips of mortals. Number three, when the Almighty showers us with his favor and blessings, the natural inclination is to proclaim His goodness from the rooftops, 
eager to showcase all that he has bestowed upon us. Yet there exists a profound wisdom in God's occasional call for discretion regarding his blessings. You see, when we loudly broadcast the blessings bestowed upon us by God, it can sometimes attract misguided attention. People may begin to perceive us through the lens of these external blessings, neglecting to discern the true essence of our hearts and character. Furthermore, some may even attempt to exploit or manipulate us on account of our perceived abundance. Moreover, the act of openly flaunting God's blessings can inadvertently lead us down a perilous path of imprudence. The pressure to maintain appearances and impress others may begin to weigh heavily upon us. Consequently, we risk succumbing to pride, seeking personal glory rather than attributing all honor to God. It's a treacherous slope that threatens to squander the very blessings entrusted to us by the divine. In illustrating this concept, Jesus imparted a poignant lesson through the parable of the talents, chronicled in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. We encounter a master who delegates his wealth to his servants prior to embarking on a journey. To one servant, he bestows five talents, to another two talents, and to a third one talent, each according to their ability. The first two servants judiciously invest their talents and yield a twofold increase, while the third servant, consumed by fear, opts to bury a solitary talent in the ground. Upon the master's return, he commends the faithfulness of the first two servants, but castigates the third for his negligence, branding him as wicked and slothful. Subsequently, the master redistributes the talent, transferring it to the servant who had initially received 10 talents. This parable serves as a poignant reminder that God desires our faithful stewardship and fruitful utilization of the blessings bestowed upon us, rather than cowardice or frivolity. He does not bless us to indulge our egos. Rather, He entrusts us with gifts to be administered wisely in accordance with His purposes. Frequently, the most effective approach entails exercising discretion, refraining from drawing undue attention to ourselves. This allows us to remain steadfastly focused on God's calling, utilizing His blessings to advance His kingdom without being swayed by external opinions or expectations. It fosters humility and reinforces our reliance upon Him. Therefore, I urge you today, when God showers His blessings upon you, receive them with gratitude, but exercise wisdom and discernment in stewarding them. Resist the urge to broadcast them to the world. Instead, seek divine guidance on how to employ these blessings for God's glory and the betterment of others. Invest them prudently, multiply them diligently, and demonstrate fidelity in managing what God has entrusted to you. As you embark on this journey, you will discover the profound joy and fulfillment that emanate from aligning your life with God's purposes. Liberated from the shackles of external opinions and the allure of misusing God's gifts, you will ultimately hear the words every faithful servant yearns for. Well done, good and faithful servant. May you steward every blessing with wisdom and experience the abundant life that God has ordained for you. Number four, my beloved friends, I am compelled to impart to you a profound truth that holds the power to revolutionize the very fabric of our existence as devoted followers of Jesus. In the Gospel of John 15, 19, our Lord and Savior tenderly reminds us that we are not of this world. This simple yet profound declaration resonates deeply within our souls and demands our unwavering attention. As Christians, we are tasked with inhabiting this earthly realm while steadfastly refusing to conform to its patterns. We are called to embody a radiant beacon amidst the prevailing darkness. Akin to a city perched atop a hill, its luminance incapable of concealment. Yet the allurements of the world incessantly beckon us, enticing us to pursue transient pursuits of fame, stature, and acclaim. They insidiously whisper deceitful promises of gratification and fulfillment, urging us to embrace their transient offerings. However, my dear companions, let us be unequivocally cognizant that authentic joy and true contentment can only be unearthed in the person of Christ. 
When God in his infinite mercy bestows his favor upon us, it is not for us to vaunt or exploit as a mechanism for exalting ourselves above our brethren. Rather, it is a hallowed endowment that demands reverence and adoration in the sacred recesses of our hearts, acknowledging its sole provenance from the divine. In our reticence concerning the blessings bestowed upon us by God, we exhibit an unwavering faith and unwavering reliance upon Him alone. We manifest that our hope is firmly anchored, not in the ephemeral allurements and accolades of this transient sphere, but in the immutable promises of our Heavenly Father. By eschewing the pursuit of external validation and acclaim, we boldly declare that our identity and worth find their culmination solely in Christ. This dictates not a prohibition on sharing our testimonies or the manifold blessings bestowed upon us by the Almighty, but rather mandates that we do so with an attitude of profound humility, relinquishing all glory unto Him. In adopting such a disposition, we emerge as conspicuous anomalies amidst the prevailing ethos of this world, resolutely marching to the cadence of a divine symphony in perfect harmony with the pulsating rhythm of our Savior's heart. Thus, my cherished friends, let us wholeheartedly embrace this eternal verity, permitting it to indelibly shape the very fabric of our existence. May we derive our unbridled joy and inexhaustible satisfaction in the person of Christ, cognizant that He alone holds the key to satiating the deepest yearnings of our souls. As we traverse the corridors of this temporal realm, may the tenor of our lives resound as a resplendent testament to the boundless love, grace, and magnanimity of our Savior, beckoning multitudes to the foot of the cross. Remember, dear ones, you are not ensnared by the fleeting trappings of this world. Rather, you stand as heirs of the Most High God, summoned to traverse a path illuminated by the effulgent radiance of His glory. Fix your gaze unwaveringly upon Jesus and let the totality of your existence emerge as a fragrant offering, consecrated and pleasing in His sight. Number five, our intrinsic value and true identity find their genesis in Jesus Christ transcending the fleeting accolades and admiration of humanity. Psalm 139 poetically articulates the profound depth of God's intimate knowledge of us. From the intricacies of our being to the very formation of our existence within the womb, He perceives the innermost recesses of our thoughts and desires, cherishing us as His precious and marvelously crafted handiwork. Upon embracing the boundless love that God lavishes upon us and comprehending the sacrificial price paid by Jesus for our redemption, we are emancipated from the relentless pursuit of external validation. No longer are we tethered to the exhausting treadmill of striving to validate our worth in the eyes of the world. Instead, our identity finds firm anchorage in our relationship with Christ. As His beloved children, we stand embraced and adored by the Father, irrespective of our earthly achievements or failures. Our significance is not contingent upon human appraisal, for Jesus has unequivocally affirmed our immeasurable worth by surrendering His life on the cross. Through His redemptive act and triumphant resurrection, our intrinsic value is irrevocably declared. We are cherished, redeemed, and clothed in His righteousness. Therefore, when God bestows His blessings upon us, endows us with gifts and talents, or orchestrates divine interventions in our lives, there is no imperative to broadcast these occurrences for validation. Instead, we find solace in quietly treasuring His benevolence within our hearts, offering gratitude that reverberates from the recognition that every blessing emanates from Him, the ultimate source of all goodness. This resolute stance not only underscores our reliance upon Him, but also proclaims that our identity is firmly entrenched in His unfailing love, rather than in the transient adulation of mortals. In directing our gaze unwaveringly towards Jesus, the epitome of our faith and the quintessence of perfection, we unearth a satisfaction that transcends the temporal offerings of this world. In Him, we discover the quintessence of unconditional love and unyielding acceptance, satiating the deepest yearnings of our souls. Liberated from the shackles of worldly affirmation, 
We traverse life's journey with humility and assurance, embracing our authentic identity bestowed upon us by our Creator. Resting securely in the embrace of the Father's love and apprehending the magnitude of Christ's sacrifice on our behalf, we relinquish the incessant pursuit of worldly acclaim. Our lives become a resounding testimony, echoing the profound truth encapsulated in Colossians 3. 3. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. May we, therefore, find unequivocal affirmation of our identity, worth, and joy in Him alone. And should you still be journeying alongside me through this discourse, I humbly invite you to affirm your presence with an Amen in the comments below, a testament to our shared pursuit of truth and revelation in Christ. Number 6. My dear friends, one of the profound reasons behind the discretion urged upon us when we receive blessings from God is to safeguard against the unintended consequences of envy and rivalry among our fellow believers. Even when our intentions are pure and sincere, openly discussing the blessings bestowed upon us by God can inadvertently stir feelings of envy or inadequacy in others, disrupting the unity and harmony within the body of Christ a scenario contrary to the desires of our Heavenly Father. The Word of God unequivocally addresses this issue in Philippians 2. 3. Admonishing us to conduct ourselves with humility, valuing others above yourselves. This poignant directive serves as a steadfast reminder that our actions and words should invariably stem from a posture of humility and genuine regard for the welfare of our brethren. When we boast about our blessings, we inadvertently create a breeding ground for unhealthy comparisons and competitive spirits among our peers. Others may find themselves grappling with feelings of inferiority or resentment, questioning their own worthiness, or pondering why God appears to shower favor upon us more abundantly. Such discord is antithetical to the spirit of unity and love that Christ ardently desires for his body. Instead, we are implored by God to exercise discretion and refrain from inadvertently inciting jealousy or competition. By cherishing our blessings discreetly, we foster an atmosphere of grace and empathy, wherein each member of the body of Christ feels esteemed and cherished. Crucially, it is imperative to recognize that the abundance of blessings in our lives does not serve as a gauge of our spiritual worth or God's love for us. Our Heavenly Father extends His love to each of His children impartially and boundlessly. Armed with this profound truth, we can wholeheartedly celebrate the blessings bestowed upon others without succumbing to feelings of insecurity or diminishment. Furthermore, the practice of discretion in relation to our blessings facilitates the cultivation of a spirit of gratitude and humility within us. We come to acknowledge that every good and perfect gift originates from the benevolent hand of God and thus we ascribe all honor and praise unto Him. By refraining from seeking attention for ourselves, we redirect all adoration and exaltation back to the author of our blessings, our Heavenly Father. However, let it be clear that exercising discretion regarding our blessings does not entail a blanket prohibition on sharing our testimonies or recounting the wondrous works of God in our lives. There undoubtedly exists a fitting time and context for the sharing of our stories to edify and inspire others. Yet, it is imperative that we exercise wisdom and discernment, ever mindful of the potential impact our words may wield upon those around us. Therefore, my cherished friends, let us internalize this invaluable lesson. When God bestows His blessings upon us, let us exercise restraint in our speech while maintaining openness in our hearts. Let us prioritize the exaltation of others above ourselves, rejoicing in their triumphs and extending support in their trials. In so doing, let us cultivate a vibrant community of believers wherein each individual feels valued, respected, and loved. A community that mirrors the boundless love of Christ towards us. As we traverse the path of humility and gratitude, may we taste the authentic joy and tranquility that emanate from a life surrendered to God. 
May our quiet obedience and selfless love serve as a compelling testament to the transformative power of Christ within us. Remember, our ultimate aim is to bring glory to God and to further the advancement of His kingdom. By exercising discretion regarding our blessings and esteeming others above ourselves, we contribute towards the unity and flourishing of the body of Christ. Number seven, in contemplating the timeless wisdom encapsulated in Paul's epistle to the Philippians, specifically in chapter four, two, we are beckoned to delve into the profound revelation he unveils, a revelation that possesses the transformative potency to revolutionize our existence, the clandestine essence of contentment amidst all circumstances. Contentment, as elucidated by Paul, transcends the mere materialistic metrics of possession or lack. It transcends the fluctuations of abundance and scarcity that often govern human perception. True contentment emanates from a profound, intimate satisfaction found in a communion with the divine. It is the cultivation of a state of being wherein both our needs and blessings are entrusted to the providence of God, fostering an equipoise of spirit, an unwavering stability resilient to the vicissitudes of life's trials and tribulations. Consider the sublime equilibrium achieved when we receive blessings, not as possessions to possess, but as gifts to be gratefully acknowledged, recognizing their celestial origins. Liberated from the ensnarement of allowing these blessings to define our essence, we can instead embrace them as instruments for the glorification of God, while steadfastly anchoring our identity in the personhood of Christ. Likewise, when confronted with the stark realities of deprivation or want, we are summoned to approach the heavenly throne with unadulterated candor and unyielding trust. It is in this surrender that we find solace in the assurance of divine providence. Assured that our Creator perceives our plight, tends to our needs, and bestows upon us according to the boundless opulence of His benevolence. Thus our contentment becomes independent of circumstantial fluctuations, firmly tethered to the immutable character of our Sovereign Lord. This clandestine truth, which Paul himself assimilated, stands as an inheritance accessible to all who profess allegiance to Christ. While its assimilation may pose challenges, as we endeavor to fix our gaze unwaveringly upon the person of Jesus Christ, as we endeavor to derive our ultimate satisfaction solely from Him, we unearth a peace that defies rational comprehension. It is a peace that fortifies us to confront adversities with unwavering resolve and to embrace blessings with hearts overflowing with gratitude. Let us therefore rally one another in the pursuit of this transcendent contentment. Let us serve as beacons of reminder, affirming that our intrinsic value, our immutable worth, and our profound identity find their nexus in Christ alone, transcending the ephemeral allure of worldly possessions. In doing so, we shall taste the exultation and liberty that accompanies the revelation that in Christ we lack nothing. May we wholeheartedly embrace the enigmatic essence of contentment. May we entrust our needs and blessings to the divine embrace and find therein our deepest satiation. For in so doing we shall echo the Apostle Paul's resounding declaration, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number eight. As we traverse the winding paths of life's journey, we find ourselves showered with blessings from the divine hand. Yet there are moments when God in His wisdom bids us to hold these blessings close, veiling them from the eyes of others for a season. Let us serve as beacons of reminder, affirming that our intrinsic value, our immutable worth, and our profound identity find their nexus in Christ alone transcending the ephemeral allure of worldly possessions. In doing so, we shall taste the exultation and liberty that accompanies the revelation that in Christ we lack nothing. May we wholeheartedly embrace the enigmatic essence of contentment. May we entrust our needs and blessings to the divine embrace and find therein our deepest satiation. For in so doing, we shall echo the Apostle Paul's resounding declaration I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Number 8. As we traverse the winding paths of life's journey, we find ourselves showered with blessings from the Divine Hand. Yet there are moments when God in His wisdom bids us to hold these blessings close, veiling them from the eyes of others for a season. This directive isn't to deny us the joy of sharing, but rather to instill within us a profound lesson in trust. Trust in His timing, His methods, and His overarching plan for our lives. 1. Peter 5, 6 imparts a timeless truth. Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that He may lift you up in due time. This scripture serves as a poignant reminder that authentic humility doesn't entail self-abasement. Rather, it entails a surrender to the divine will, a relinquishing of our desires to the sovereign guidance of God's hand. When God bestows His blessings upon us, it's natural to desire to broadcast His goodness to the world. However, there are occasions when He instructs us to conceal these blessings temporarily. This isn't a test of our loyalty or a deprivation of joy, but rather a call to exhibit an active trust in His divine orchestration. By yielding to His sovereignty over the unveiling of His favor, we affirm His supremacy and acknowledge His wisdom surpassing our own finite understanding. The narrative of Joseph in the Old Testament serves as a vivid exemplar of this principle. Despite receiving divine revelations of his future exaltation, Joseph exercised restraint, refraining from trumpeting his prophetic dreams prematurely. Instead, he entrusted their fulfillment to the hands of God, awaiting the appointed hour with patience and steadfast faith. Joseph's journey toward the realization of his dreams was fraught with trials and tribulations. He encountered betrayal, enslavement, false accusations, and imprisonment. Yet amid the darkest moments, Joseph clung to the assurance of God's plan, steadfastly awaiting the fruition of his promises. By yielding to his sovereignty over the unveiling of his favor, we affirm his supremacy and acknowledge his wisdom surpassing our own finite understanding. The narrative of Joseph in the Old Testament serves as a vivid exemplar of this principle. Despite receiving divine revelations of his future exaltation, Joseph exercised restraint, refraining from trumpeting his prophetic dreams prematurely. Instead, he entrusted their fulfillment to the hands of God, awaiting the appointed hour with patience and steadfast faith. Joseph's journey toward the realization of his dreams was fraught with trials and tribulations. He encountered betrayal, enslavement, false accusations, and imprisonment. Yet amid the darkest moments, Joseph clung to the assurance of God's plan, steadfastly awaiting the fruition of his promises. In the fullness of time, God orchestrated Joseph's ascent from the depths of prison to the pinnacle of power in Egypt fulfilling the prophetic visions and positioning him as a beacon of salvation during a time of famine. Consider the alternative scenario. Had Joseph yielded to the temptation of hastening the fulfillment of his dreams through human endeavor, he might have succumbed to pride and missed out on the profound blessings God had ordained for him. Likewise, in our lives today, the impulse to seize control and manipulate circumstances in our favor often beckons. Yet true humility beckons us to relinquish our will to God's, entrusting Him with the timing and orchestration of His blessings. If you find yourself in a season where God has bestowed His favor upon you, but bids you to keep it concealed, take solace. Rest assured that He has a grand design and purpose for your life, far surpassing your present comprehension. In the waiting, devote yourself to drawing closer to Him immersing yourself in prayer and scripture, allowing his refining touch to mold and shape your character. When the appointed time arrives and God chooses to unveil his favor, be prepared to magnify his name and testify to his faithfulness. Let your life resound with the melody of his goodness and utilize your blessings as instruments of his grace, advancing his kingdom and uplifting others. Therefore, let us heed the call to humble ourselves beneath the omnipotent hand of God, embracing His timing and His divine purposes. 
Let us patiently await his appointed hour, secure in the knowledge that his plans for us are benevolent and his presence ever steadfast. Number nine. My dear friends, I'm compelled to share with you a profound truth that has the potential to revolutionize your walk with God. The significance of fostering an intimate audience of one by keeping the blessings bestowed upon you by the divine private. In Matthew 6, 6, Jesus imparts this wisdom saying, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This principle extends beyond prayer. It encompasses how we handle the blessings and breakthroughs God graciously bestows upon us. When God pours out his blessings upon you, whether it's in the form of spiritual growth, answered prayers, financial provision, or restored relationships, his deepest longing is to draw you into deeper communion with him. By electing to keep these sacred moments solely between you and God, you create an environment where intimacy with him can flourish in exquisite ways. Picture, if you will, a secret garden, a secluded haven where only you and God meet. Each blessing he bestows upon you is akin to a precious seed tenderly planted in the soil of your heart. As you diligently nurture this garden in the quietude of your sacred space, watering it with gratitude, adoration, and basking in the radiance of his presence, these seeds germinate and blossom into a verdant sanctuary of intimacy with your Creator. In this concealed abode, you learn to drown out the clamor of the world, training your heart to perform before the only audience that truly matters, your Heavenly Father. The allure of human applause or judgment begins to pale in comparison to the delight reflected in your Father's gaze. Your attunement to His gentle whispers amplifies and your affection for him deepens with each passing moment. Just as a devoted couple shares intimate moments and inside jokes meant exclusively for each other's ears, God yearns for those cherished encounters with you that are not meant for public consumption. It is within these clandestine moments of communion with him that your faith is fortified, your perspective is refreshed, and the bond with your creator is strengthened. Therefore, I implore you, when God showers his blessings upon you, resist the impulse to hastily broadcast it to the world. Instead, relish these blessings in the secret place with him. Document them in a journal, serenade him with songs of worship, or simply bask in his presence, allowing him to minister to the depths of your soul. Let him be the primary recipient of your exaltation and let your gratitude overflow at his feet before anyone else's. As you cultivate this practice of safeguarding your blessings between you and God, you'll discover that your relationship with him will blossom in richness, depth, and vibrancy beyond measure. A sacred narrative will unfold, chronicling moments of his unwavering faithfulness and boundless love, sustaining you through every season of life. And true to Jesus' promise, your Father who beholds your secret devotion will reward you, not merely with additional blessings, but with an intensified revelation of himself, the greatest reward of all. Therefore, let us pledge today to nurture an audience of one and behold as our intimacy with God flourishes as never before. Number 10, it's a natural inclination to want to shout from the rooftops and share our joy with the world when we experience blessings in our lives. Yet there are instances when God prompts us to keep silent about the blessings He has bestowed upon us. One of the most profound reasons for this call to silence is to ensure that God's glory remains our ultimate focus and aim. In 1 Corinthians 10.31, the Apostle Paul underscores this truth, urging us, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. This scripture serves as a poignant reminder that every facet of our lives should be oriented towards bringing honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. When we receive blessings from God, whether they are monumental or seemingly mundane, it presents an opportunity to redirect all praise and adoration back to Him.
By quietly reveling in God's goodness, we intentionally shift the spotlight away from ourselves and onto the giver of every good and perfect gift. It's not about garnering attention for what we've received, but rather about acknowledging the graciousness of the one who bestows blessings upon us. When we humbly embrace God's gifts without the compulsion to broadcast them to the world, we manifest our trust in His divine plan and our fervent desire to magnify His name above all else. The Virgin Mary stands as a luminous exemplar of this principle in practice. Throughout the Gospel narratives, we witness her encounter extraordinary blessings from God, including the miraculous conception of Jesus and the angelic visitation foretelling His birth. Yet rather than hastily divulging these divine encounters to others, Scripture portrays Mary as one who treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary's response serves as a profound lesson for us, emphasizing the value of cherishing God's goodness in the quiet recesses of our hearts. By privately meditating on His blessings, we carve out sacred space to deepen our communion with Him and gain deeper insight into His ways. This deliberate act allows us to steep in gratitude and wonder, acknowledging that every blessing emanates from His benevolent hand. Moreover, by resisting the urge to incessantly broadcast our blessings, we safeguard ourselves from the pitfalls of pride and self-righteousness. It's all too easy to succumb to feelings of superiority or entitlement when we experience success or abundance. However, by exercising restraint and fixing our gaze solely on Him, we cultivate a posture of humility, recognizing that we are unworthy beneficiaries of His boundless grace. This isn't to suggest that we should never share our testimonies or express gratitude for God's work in our lives. There are certainly occasions when proclaiming His goodness can edify and inspire others, pointing them towards Christ. Nonetheless, it's imperative that we consistently examine our motives, ensuring that our primary objective is to exalt God's name rather than seeking validation or acclaim for ourselves. In a culture that often exalts self-promotion and encourages the flaunting of personal achievements, choosing to maintain silence about God's blessings may feel counterintuitive. Yet as followers of Christ, we are called to live lives that diverge from the world's standards prioritizing His kingdom and righteousness above all else. By directing all glory back to Him, we align our hearts with His purposes and discover genuine fulfillment in His presence. So the next time you find yourself blessed by God, whether through answered prayers, unexpected provisions, or spiritual growth, take a moment to pause and reflect. Treasure the blessing in your heart, offer private thanks to God, and let your quiet delight serve as a sacred offering of praise. Remember, your ultimate aim is to magnify His glory, trusting that He will utilize your obedience to accomplish His divine purposes in His perfect timing. As you navigate life's ebbs and flows, may you find assurance in the knowledge that God sees and honors every act of humility, every sacrifice made in His name. Rest assured, your quiet obedience never escapes His notice and He faithfully rewards those who diligently seek to honor Him above all else. Persist in your journey, exercising discretion when necessary, and observe as God tirelessly works within and through you solely for His glory. Dearest Heavenly Father, I am deeply grateful for the multitude of blessings you lavish upon me each passing day. Your boundless generosity and unwavering kindness know no limits. As I reflect upon the myriad blessings you have bestowed upon me, my heart brims with gratitude. Lord, I acknowledge that every good and perfect gift emanates from your benevolent hand. You are the wellspring of all blessings in my life. My talents, relationships, material provisions, and spiritual growth are all manifestations of your grace. Yet, Father, I humbly confess that at times, upon receiving your blessings, my initial inclination is to proclaim them to the world. I yearn for acknowledgement and adulation, allowing pride to swell within me. Forgive me for not first attributing all blessings to your divine providence. 
Your word instructs us to remain silent about the goodness you bestow upon us. When you bless us, it is not for us to boast, but simply to offer gratitude. You admonish us not to flaunt our generosity before others for recognition, but to give quietly and in secret, for then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward us. Even Jesus, after performing miracles, often instructed people to refrain from divulging what had occurred. His acts of compassion were to glorify you, not to seek personal acclaim. Grant me the strength to emulate his humble example. God, I believe you call upon me to maintain silence concerning your blessings in my life for several reasons. Firstly, you alone deserve all glory, not me. May I never usurp your praise for the great things you have done. Secondly, you desire humility, not pride, from your children. Quietly receiving your blessings fosters dependency upon you. Lastly, I believe you desire to be the one to proclaim the news of what you've done, not me. Let my life serve as a testament to your goodness, trusting you to reveal it in your way and timing. Instill within me a heart brimming with gratitude that marvels at your blessings in my life without feeling compelled to broadcast them. May I be quick to offer you praise, hesitant to speak of my own achievements, and content in the knowledge that you are cognizant of every good thing you've bestowed upon me. May my life be characterized by humble appreciation and discreet generosity. Thank you for your countless blessings and for the joy of quietly cherishing them with you. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Dear friends, as we draw near the conclusion of this discussion on why God sometimes prompts us to maintain silence regarding His blessings, I wish to leave you with a few parting reflections. God's blessings are not solely for our benefit, but are also intended to be utilized for His glory and divine purposes. When we receive a blessing from God, our initial inclination may be to proclaim it loudly and share it with everyone. However, there are moments when God asks us to remain silent and treasure His blessings within our hearts. This does not imply that we cannot express gratitude or rejoice in God's goodness. Rather, it necessitates sensitivity to His guidance and trust in His timing. Perhaps He intends to work within us more deeply or shield us from the envy or malice of others. Whatever the reason, we can rest assured that God is sovereign and His plans are perfect. Our responsibility is to steward His blessings faithfully, utilizing them in a manner that brings Him honor. Therefore, if you find yourself in a season where God is urging you to maintain silence regarding a blessing He has bestowed upon you, embrace it as an opportunity for spiritual growth and intimacy with Him. Seek His wisdom and guidance, trusting that He will reveal His purposes in due time. When the moment arrives to share your testimony of God's goodness, do so with humility and gratitude, allowing your life to serve as a testament to His faithfulness. Remember, even in seasons of silence, God is at work behind the scenes, preparing you for greater things. Trust Him, obey Him, and witness the extraordinary ways in which He will use you to impact the world for His kingdom. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey. May God continue to bless and keep you, showering you with His favor and blessings as you walk in obedience to His will. Remember, He is a good, good Father who loves you beyond measure. Keep pressing into Him and watch as He orchestrates marvelous deeds within and through your life. As we conclude, take a moment to reflect on our discussion. How can you cultivate humility, contentment, and discreet stewardship of God's blessings in your life? Share your insights in the comments below. If you found this discussion beneficial, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your engagement and may God's abundant blessings be upon you always.